What's up y'all? Welcome to Draw Every Day. My name is Sean and today we're going to be drawing the iconic Spider-Man villain, Carnage. The end of the standalone Venom movie teased that Woody Harrelson would be playing this character in the sequel. With that trailer right around the corner, I just had to take a stab at drawing one of my favorite 90s Spider-Man villains. As cool as Venom was, Carnage always had this wild, chaotic energy evidenced by the tendrils that were always shooting off of his body. He was unpredictable, uncontrollable, and always just a little bit scarier than Venom. But before we get into the drawing, if you could click subscribe and then form a symbiotic relationship with the like button, I'd really appreciate it and it'll benefit you because it's going to enter you to win a Huion H610 Pro graphics tablet that we're giving away at a thousand subs. We're also giving away 50 bucks. Skip to the end of the video if you want to find out how to win that. Okay, first of all, I want to apologize for the lack of content in the last several days. I uh, basically just had real life take over. I think we can all probably um, relate to that in some way. But this felt like a good opportunity to get back on track. Um, Carnage is a character that's so fun and expressive that I didn't really have to worry about too much anatomy, which I am not so good at. So um, yeah, I just got right into it. Started blocking out the silhouette like I always do. Got a couple squiggles for where I think the arms are going to go. And I got to drawing the most fun part of any of these Spider-Man characters, which is the eyes. Um, I just, you know, there's something so satisfying about it. From Spider-Man to Venom to Carnage to Grendel to Spawn, it's just whoever came up with this first, kudos to you. Okay, here I am drawing the rest of his teeth and his jaw. I'm going to be cutting off his jaw and rearranging it. Um, you know my motto, just because you can't draw doesn't mean you shouldn't draw. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll mess things up like that, and the beauty of working digitally is that you can always fix it. All right, let's watch as I block in some of the rest of this and I'm gonna come back in a few minutes and talk about hands. Okay, in real time, this drawing probably took about an hour and a half. If I could draw hands, it probably would have only taken about a half an hour. <laughs> um, I just, uh, they still vex me to this day. I just usually takes a lot of work, a lot of revision. I think it's like that for a lot of people. I really need to go back to the drawing board and just draw hands for a whole week. I'm sure that would be really exciting for you guys to watch, but um, it might have to happen. I don't know. Here you see, I'm just trying to figure out the, uh, the building blocks. Uh, one of the problems is, as you notice how I draw a lot of the time, is that I like to just dive in there and get going, and there's some things that you really do have to plan. The hands are just too complex of a um, object to, to just freeform. Of course, as I say that, I am freeforming a pretty decent hand on the right here. Um, this is sort of a shape hand that I learned from Jim Lee. There was a comic called Wildcats in the 90s and a character named Warblade who had liquid metal hands that he could form into any shape. So he was always just doing, you know, big, scary, grippy hands like this. Um, the hand that's currently on the right, his left hand, I actually did a pretty decent job on, but the perspective of the right hand on the bottom right now, I was having some trouble with. Um, I definitely recommend checking out Cynix's channel for some tutorials on drawing hands that I have obviously not paid enough attention to.
Notice that as soon as I start slowing down and sort of putting the building blocks of the hand together, it actually starts looking right. Who would have thunk? I'm going to start working on the composition here. Again, working digitally, I can kind of drag different pieces around as I see fit, sort of change the pose and posture of the arm so that I'm using the maximum amount of space while still leaving some areas of light space and not allowing for too much overlap that would end up making things ambiguous. I really wanted his pose and his um, anatomy to be fairly clear. That's why I have the arm in the background sort of fade out as it's getting close to his body because I wanted it to be clear that it was coming out of the far side of his body and not like say the middle of his chest, which with a symbiote I suppose is possible. From here on out, it's gonna be a lot of details. Right now I'm adding some detail to the border, a little texture up top so that you can tell that it's in front of his body. And then I'm gonna be erasing out the border beneath his hands so that his hands look like they're in front of the body, which gives the impression that he's sort of pushing forward in space through this. Ideally, I would have liked to have his head break the border. I think that would be um, the most clear way to show that that's the most forward part of the image, but I didn't do that. So uh, I've got some pretty good texture going on on his body. So now I'm going in with a uh, layer mask and I'm drawing some more texture into the black and red parts of his body to give that sort of undulating symbiote texture that we all know and love. I'm also adding a lot of little tendrils gripping between like his fingers and his armpits and things like that. And then finally, I'll be adding tendrils going everywhere in the classic carnage way, shooting out of his back, connecting to the border and just sort of interacting with the environment in a cool way. Um, some final details on his eyes so that they're not just sharp white and a few more twists and turns. I love to make them as just intricate and weird as possible. Going through and adding the rest of the tendrils now, as well as going back with another layer of white to add little specular highlights to them to give them that sticky, gooey feel. Um, I just love the way that the symbiote connects to everything. It's so uncomfortable and alien looking. Um, I also noticed that there's a new spiral motif with Carnage, so I tried to work in some of that into the border, just a little subtle hint at what they're doing in the comics now. I didn't want to give him the big spiral on his forehead because I think that's a little goofy, but um, I'm really excited to see how they handle this character in the movie. Woody Harrelson's a little older than I would have imagined, but obviously when it comes to a fully CGI monster, it doesn't really matter what the actor is physically capable of, they'll be able to handle it. I just hope that they keep his slender physique as it compares to Venom. In the first movie, the Venom also that he fought was basically a carbon copy, same physique, same color, and Carnage just provides a real opportunity for a lot of contrast, both with the color and his silhouette being so much different. Okay guys, from here on out, I'm gonna be drawing the final details. I'll be using my favorite trick, which is drawing in white and then adding a drop shadow to give the effect of these gross veins all over his body. I think also after I stopped recording, I did draw a few more tendrils to balance out the composition in the lower left-hand corner of the image. And I'll be back when we take a look at the final image. Okay guys, here's the final image. What do you think? How did I do? Is this recognizably carnage? Is he gross enough? Are there any details that I missed that you would have liked to see? Are you excited to see Woody Harrelson portray carnage in Venom 2? I definitely think he has the acting chops and that we could have some really fun scenes between him and Tom Hardy. And since it's a fully CGI character, his age doesn't really come into play and they can do whatever they want. I just hope that they get his body type right and that he's got the skinnier silhouette and it's not just a big red Venom. The villain in the first movie was just too similar to Venom and Carnage gives a great opportunity for some contrast. Okay guys, we are also giving away a Huion H610 Pro graphics tablet at a thousand subs. All you have to do to win that graphics tablet is to subscribe, turn on notifications, like and leave a comment on this video, and that's gonna enter you to win the graphics tablet in addition to the $50 gift cards to imprint that we're giving away at every 250 subs. 
We just gave away our 500 sub gift card and we're going to be giving away another one at 750. That'll be coming up probably within this month, so please subscribe now. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. This is Dry Every Day. I'm Sean and we'll be back with another video tomorrow.